Greetings listeners of my podcast. In this episode, I'll be looking at the attitudes of the two most commonly practiced religions in the world in regards to the LGBTQ plus community. Firstly, Christians make up 31.2% of the world's population, making Christianity the largest religion in the world. The acceptance of homosexuality varies by each branch of Christianity. Roman Catholics call on homosexuals to be accepted with respect, compassion and sensitivity, and that every sign of unjust discrimination in their regard should be avoided. So evidently, they do not believe that homosexuals should be discriminated against. However, they call on homosexual people to practice chastity, which means no sexual intercourse, and they do not support same-sex marriage, which basically means they're discriminating against homosexuals because they are not afforded the same rights as heterosexual people. Pope Francis, the current head of the Roman Catholic Church, has previously condemned discrimination towards homosexuals, and once said, if a person is gay and seeks God and has good will, who am I to judge him? He also said in 2019 that same-sex couples should be protected by civil union laws. However, he has also said that same-sex acts are sinful and that homosexuality is something that worries him. Meanwhile, the Quaker view differs from this. Quakers believe that gay couples should not be judged on their selfless love and that they have a right to love each other. Quakers have stated that to reject people on the grounds of their sexual behaviour is in denial of God's creation. Essentially, this tells me that God made homosexuals as they are, so how can we judge them and judge who God created? Most Christians will hold views somewhere between the Quaker and Roman Catholic views. Some churches willingly accept openly homosexual people in positions of authority. Some will offer support to homosexuals who commit to chastity, while others may shun homosexuals and reject them from society. In the Bible, Leviticus chapter 18 verse 22 says, You shall not lie with a male as one lies with a female. It is an abomination. However, this is actually incorrectly quoted as being against homosexuality, as the Bible was inaccurately translated in this case. Originally, the verse said little boy rather than female, so it was not opposing homosexuality, but rather opposing and condemning paedophilia. In terms of acceptance for homosexuality, a Pew Research study has shown that those who are religiously unaffiliated are more likely to support homosexual rights. For example, in Hungary, 62% of non-religious people say that society should accept homosexuality, while only 48% of Catholics are accepting. Most churches restrict the ordination of sexually active LGB clergy due to the view that same-sex acts are sinful. Despite this, a growing number of churches are allowing openly LGBT clergy to serve. A church known as an LGBT church, the Metropolitan Community Church, has ordained those of the LGBT community since it was founded in 1968. In 1972, the United Church of Christ became the first mainline Protestant denomination in the US to ordain an openly gay member of the clergy. In regards to portrayal in the media, personally, I've seen a number of movies and TV shows which portray homosexuals in regards to Christianity. For example, the movie Prayers for Bobby is based on the true story of the life and legacy of Bobby Griffith, a gay teen who killed himself in 1983 due to his religious mother's homophobia. After finally coming to terms with her late son's sexuality, she becomes a gay rights crusader. Secondly, Muslims make up 24.1% of the world population. Generally speaking, Islam does not tolerate homosexuality, as the Quran argues that it is unnatural and against the will of Allah. Most administrations and schools in the areas of Sharia law, Islamic religious law, view homosexual sex as equally as sinful as adultery, and therefore deserving of the punishment of death. Because Islam has no central governing body, it is not possible to state clear policies regarding issues of interest to LGBTQ plus people, although some Muslims argue that Muhammad, peace be upon him, celebrated the diversity of creation. Some Islamic states impose the death penalty on people caught taking part in homosexual acts. According to the International Lesbian and Gay Association, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Iran, Afghanistan, Mauritiana, Sudan, and northern states of Nigeria still retain capital punishment for homosexual behaviour. In the UAE, it is a capital offence. In Qatar, Algeria, Uzbekistan, and the Maldives, homosexuality is punished with time in prison or a fine. 
in the UK, there are Muslims who are openly homosexual and that they are protected by anti-discrimination laws. Despite this, they may still face strong opposition from other Muslims and rejection within their own families. In the US, there is a growing movement to create inclusive communities for LGBTQ plus Muslims, with a recent survey by Public Religion Research Center showing that 52% of American Muslims agree that society should approve of homosexuality. Rather surprisingly to me, transgender men and women are recognized and accepted in many Islamic cultures around the world. In fact, being transgender is more likely to be accepted than homosexuality. As early as 1987, Iran's leader, Ayatollah Khomeini, declared transgender surgical operations allowable. In 1988, scholars at the world's oldest Islamic university, Al-Azhar, declared gender reassignment surgery acceptable under Islamic law. Again, in terms of acceptance, a Pew Research study has shown that those who are religiously unaffiliated are more likely to support homosexuality. According to the survey, Islam-majority countries particularly lack acceptance. However, in Nigeria, for example, 6% of Christians are willing to accept homosexuality and 8% of Muslims are accepting. Meanwhile, Jews in Israel are much more likely to say that homosexuality is acceptable, at 53% acceptance, while acceptance among Muslims is 17%. In regards to marriage equality, because there is no central governing authority, communities and individuals are free to make their own choices regarding this issue. However, same-sex weddings are performed by very few imams individually, and are performed at some unity mosques and similar inclusive mosque communities across the United States and Canada. One of the most prominent American Muslims in the US, Keith Ellison, said he believed in expanding marriage rights and responsibilities to same-sex couples and to have those marriage recognized by other states and the federal government. In Islam, there is no formal ordination process and there are some openly LGBTQ plus preachers in the Islamic community. Dai Abdullah is an American imam based in Washington DC and he is said to be one of the only five openly gay imams in the whole world. There is also a French Algerian gay imam named Ludovic Mohamed Zahid, who founded the first European inclusive mosque in Paris with the aim of including LGBT and feminist Muslim communities. He is openly HIV positive as he contracted the illness as a teenager, and in 2011 he married his South African husband in Cape Town. In regards to the portrayal of Muslim homosexuality in the media, for myself I've seen just one show in which a gay Muslim was included. That show is the second series of Love, Victor, which is about a young teen who comes to terms with being gay, comes out to his family, begins a relationship with his boyfriend, and then in the middle of the second season, Rahim, a closeted Muslim, is introduced, and he seeks Victor's advice, as Victor had to come out to a conservative, religious family, as his family were Christian. By the end of the series, Rahim has come out to his parents, who were accepting, and said they had known for a long time. <laughs> I want to end this podcast with two questions. Firstly, Christians believe in Imago Dei, that God created humans in his image. With that in mind, how can LGBTQ plus people be wrong and not be loved by God? Secondly, if people believe that God designed and created humans perfectly, then if homosexuality and sodomy is a sin, why did he put the male G-spot, the prostate, in the anus? Thank you for listening to my podcast.